All right. So, moral of this story, we're kind of just babbling at this point. Don't draw your seams. Draw. If there's a pattern, draw up to the seam on one side and up to the seam from the other side. You're going to have this kind of like offset pattern and it's going to be really clear uh, looking at it that there's a seam there, even though you're not drawing, you know, a dotted line for the seam threads, right? Oh my God, stop saying right. I'm still doing it. Hey. We are going to do the, oh, that's way too much paint. If you ever have something like that, where you can see there's like a big glob there, that's going to come off in that same glob. So we don't want that. This is much better. So we're going to, this petal comes off kind of like that. It interacts with this line here. My organizational line goes straight up, curves over, has an even curve like that as it comes back to this line. And then it comes down into this button. And then there's a line in the middle that does the same thing. This is a thicker line like that. We also have a little bit of a darker shadow here. I'm just going to paint in with some vertical lines. And then we have some vertical lines coming out of the pattern that almost connects with that. So here you can see I am painting up to the seam and not actually painting the seam. Not a whole lot going on right here, but I'm going to just darken it a bit to kind of block in a shape that I'm seeing. And this here is darker. The left side of this floral edge, like this flower's edge, right? Oh my God, stop saying right. And then I'm just going to take all of this down. like that okay and you'll see that our buttons are starting to get a little lost and as long as you still have their their structure their edges fully defined that's okay you kind of want them to kind of fall back into the pattern um, if they're glaringly obvious then odds are they're going to stick out too much they're going to be like a sore thumb and you're not going to get the effect you want um maybe in some situation you want your buttons to be super obvious because it's going to you know communicate a specific point that's when you say you know what i'm going to make these things wild and i'm going to make them way darker than everything else and their edges are going to be crisper and more defined that's what's going to draw attention to them here i don't want attention if anything's going to get attention, it's going to get, be this painting. And to be honest, this pattern wants to be the focus of the entire painting. Not her, not her, not any of this painting in here. 
I want this to be the focus because that's the part of my comp composition. And that's something we haven't really talked about is composition. Uh, basically composition is just making sure that everything is visually organized in a way that makes sense uh, to your ultimate, you know, feel or emotion you're trying to kind of capture. This is technically a uh, mirrored composition. And you may say, well, if you draw a line, it's not really mirrored. You have this person's way off to the side and so is they. And, you know, maybe this line here is in the middle. But that's not really mirrored because they're going to get a lot of attention. This is going to get a lot of attention. But there's all this empty space here. And the key thing here is that it's mirrored diagonal. Our, you know, our mirror edge isn't going down the middle this way. It's this way. So we have not necessarily colors, but attention that is balancing this. So we have a lot of attention here, a lot of attention here on the face, right? And then we actually have this leg going alongside this mirror edge. And we have a dark here that's kind of blocking it here. But this uh, dark section here is kind of balancing this dark section here on this face, which is going to be darker in this face. So we have dark, dark, intricate, intricate. We have this line here. Um, if we wanted to get super, super like picky, we have some complexity here and here. This complexity wraps around. Um, so you could think this bottom section, this bottom section here, this top section, this top section. Um, and this is going to be very dark. And this here is kind of dark on either side of that line. And the only thing breaking that is this white area over here, which for now is strictly a graphic element. That's why there's no definition here. It's not really meant to be a wall or anything. It's strictly um, in that space for a visual reason, not necessarily for the subject matter. So I just went on a pirate about my composition. I don't even remember what I was talking about. Um, let's finish up these buttons and we'll go from there. So where are we at here? We have one and a half more buttons here. So we didn't finish this one. We started doing this pattern here. And that's fine. So I'm going to start painting in some of the, uh, the shadows here. And these shadows, this button is almost entirely in shadow. It's very different from all the others. I guess it's almost just solid shadow. So it's like that on the bottom. And then like this on top. And actually this is even more exaggerated and it eventually comes together like that and this does eventually connect as well so there's just this tiny little highlight there and again we're going to take that back a little bit a little more and there we go i am going to move this over a little painting that edge just kind of pushing it out a little bit just so we're a little bit closer to this one which we've moved over we're kind of meeting in the middle at this point okay so you'll see that they are not uniform and they aren't in real life either they aren't you know cookie cutter rivets you can tell that they were not done in a precise way 
So we have one more before we get to this left edge. Let me make sure you guys can still see this. Uh, it's gonna be right here. Yeah, you can still see that, but I'm gonna have to move the camera. And maybe I'll do that. No, wrong way. I think that's pretty good, right? So, don't forget, uh, if you follow and help me out, you get your name on the wall. You can keep watching later. It's a win-win for everybody. Oh, I just kicked my light. Super professional. All right, so, um, if you're just tuning in, we're working on these rivets down here. and We've identified that there's one more here before this horizontal line, which I don't know if you can see now that I moved the camera. I think you can. Um, so we have one more rivet, a button or whatever you want to call it here. And again, I'm going to do the same process that I've been doing, which is measuring the angle from the previous rivet. This one actually goes down again. So it's something like that. Bottom edge also goes down a little bit. Okay, so we have our top and bottom edges there. I'm going to confirm those angles, both measuring them and just visually looking at them. Looks pretty good. This one is going back down. Yo! Patricia Chu Art, thank you very much uh, for the follow. You need your name on the wall. So, let me write it down so I don't spell it wrong. Looks awesome, thank you. I'm glad you like it. So, what are you thinking, Patricia? Here, over there, I'm just gonna wing it. So, I need to make sure it's like visible, right? So how about like here? I have to be careful because right here, there's like the edge of my wall. So I gotta like figure this out. So, Is that even legible? Left? Okay, I'm glad. I, <laughs> I read that after I did it. So, cool. All right. So, thanks again. And we're going to go back to painting this rivet. So, what I'm doing is uh, I have the top edge, bottom edge. Uh, I'm going to measure it and I'm going to compare it to everything else here to make sure it's perfect uh, in place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna compare it to this part of the pattern here. I just like drew on it too. So I'm gonna see where it lies in relationship to this point here. So this is actually off to the right quite a bit. So we're talking right here. So I'm gonna clean this up a little bit and then I'm going to what now what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare this point to where my grid intersects up here, which I don't think you can see. No, it is a bit too high, but uh, you can see it on the main main camera. So um, I'm just going to compare that angle to my source and it's a really, really steep angle. So it's going to be kind of tough to maintain. But does look like it's spot on. So then to get this bottom edge, 
I'm just going to compare it to this top top corner here. And it's essentially completely vertical. So we're going to drop a line completely vertical right there. We're going to clean up those organizational lines there. And we have the top and bottom corner of our rivets. You'll see that this one is closer than this one, uh, or I mean closer to this one than this one is to this one. And I think that comes from this one being a bit too wide. So I'm going to actually pull a little bit off there. It's still going to be a little closer because they actually are closer. Um, again, this isn't a super, you know, precise uh, rivet layout. So I don't know who the manufacturer is, but they really got to get this shit together. Uh, so we're just going to start drawing this now based off of the corners. I know that this right side is steeper. This one probably just comes out horizontally. For whatever reason, this is, is actually in a relatively like square angled shape. So we're going to keep that as we do this. And the right edge kind of bows in a little bit like that. So now we're going to clean up even more and we're going to paint in the shadows here. This one isn't as dark as the previous one. There's a pretty big shadow on the bottom and then the top is just a little shadow. So. These, these two should be closer together. However, I do not think that these are actually, I don't think this one is placed as well as it should be. I think it should be somewhere like this. And that's a pretty big move. Um, so it's good that you catch those things soon before you move on and this is cured or you're comparing this like something else to this that's when you know it's you're gonna have a bad time you're gonna have something super super uh messed up things aren't gonna fit together you may be able to pull it off but you got to be extra careful of that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just take some off this left edge here that's the great thing about oil paint and we're going to make sure that we maintain the proper shape of that rivet you know this one was almost entirely black but it looks like the highlight on it was lost so i'm just taking the, the back end of my brush and I'm just drawing that highlight in. It's going to like scrape off the paint. And we're going to have a much cleaner uh, edge to that highlight than if we were to try and use our finger because it's so small. So we've kind of solved that situation there. And now this is looking much, much better. So. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the pattern that's kind of in between these two buttons and around this one. It is kind of a complex floral pattern. Um, so there's a bit more to it than what we had here. And it might be similar. But let's get to it. So here for reference, I know that this kind of one petal edge comes off of the top of the button, right? So there's a line here that comes off and then kind of disappears, but then there's another one here. And this petal comes down like this. Now the, the fabric around the button makes a line right here, like a fold. So I want to acknowledge that. And continue this pedal here 
and then gets to about right here and then it's the edge of that panel. Now some of this may not make sense as I'm explaining it because this is a very complex pattern that uh, doesn't really make a lot of sense even when you're looking at it like some some parts of it are really obscured just because it's kind of forming around the the chair and in some cases this is a small section so there's really only that much pattern to work with so things get cropped uh in a, a weird way but Huh. Oh, you know what? I really farmed this. So I'm actually drawing the wrong section. So luckily, we're working with oil. We just wipe it off. So that could have been much worse if we were working in acrylic or anything else. I'm just going to clean up edge of this button and you'll see that some of that got messy and actually what happened was I was actually painting the pattern around the wrong button it's actually around this one and so that's why it helps that's exactly what I meant when we started and I said you want to make sure you count things if there's a lot of them like in this case the buttons you want to count them and understand that individual button um, that's how I caught that I realized oh I should be painting around this one so I got to back up a little bit and work on the next one over, which this one is actually much more simple. There's a line coming off of it here, which is the edge of another petal. Actually, this actually wasn't too far off of there. And then we have a lot of lines coming off of this here. It comes off the top of this button. And we have some lines that come up and just kind of like disappear. And there's an obscure shadow here. I'm going to kind of hatch it in right here. I want to make sure I don't lose the edge of my button. Okay. And there really isn't a whole lot here other than these lines. So I'm going to make a few more and that's really it. I'm going to bring this back a little bit. I also want to make sure that this doesn't end in a weird spot and that it's actually continuous. So we're good there. Okay, now on the upper edge of this button, this pattern comes off of it like this. And then there's a really strong edge right here that basically connects with that pattern on top. And another line interacts with the top edge there. Like that. There's also a weird like textured left edge. Okay, now we're getting dangerously close to this the next button so i'm gonna hold off on that top edge actually no let's there is more right here 
This has another weird texture left edge. And then coming off of this petal, it's one more. And we have a little bit of hatching going on on the left there. Just going to cut that back. Then we're going to do this pattern in here. Again, we, this was where that weird fold was when I thought it was over on this button. And this petal comes off of this one here. another petal edge here that interacts with the bottom. You want to be extra careful there that you don't go off the edge and that it looks natural. Okay. Let's clean that up a little bit. All right. So now we're ready to, we're done. Four buttons we talked to. Well, actually, looks like I'm kind of smudging this one with my left hand. That is something you need to be extra careful of. Typically, I don't rest my hand this this much on, on my surface uh, because I'm usually painting more like this in front of what I'm doing. So I'm kind of resting my hand to get a little bit extra control over what I'm doing. Um, that's just, that happens. If it happens, you just go back and, and uh, crisp up those edges. So we've done the four buttons that we, we spoke of up until this line. Now there's one that actually uh, overlaps the line. And so that's going to be uh, next. So I need to grab another drink real quick. because it is 10,000 degrees in this studio. I am sweating way more than I'd like to admit. And it doesn't really help that I'm wearing a hoodie, but also. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing we've been doing. It's just button after button after button painting in around it, making sure that we're comparing everything to all of our other major um, major design elements. So I'm still comparing to my uh, organizational lines, still comparing to other sections of the, of the design, the pattern. And this is gonna be easy because basically the top and bottom corner of this, this rivet is right on the line. So all I need to do is compare, you know, this angle, right? So let me crisp this a bit and make sure it actually goes to the edge. And then just using our finger to lighten the line a little bit. You wanna keep it transparent, uh, at least in this, this stage. If you go super opaque, uh, it's going to be harder to cover up. Um, you may not be able to be as expressive as you want to be in your uh, upper layers. So keep it light, keep it transparent. And obviously you want to balance that between being able to actually see the line uh, in a definitive way. So I'm going to judge this angle here. And again, you want to make sure that you double and triple check when you're working with angles because people are very bad at judging angles, just like humans in general. And so you need to triple check what you're doing. And this one, I don't even need to measure because it's where my two organizational lines meet. So this one is going to be super easy. 
comes off that way on the left edge. The right edge just barely sticks out and it's got a weird right edge because you can tell the, the fabric is actually kind of obscuring the rounded edge. So it's not actually rounded. So you want to make sure that you're always drawing what you're seeing and not what your brain says. If your brain, if you're listening to what your brain says, you're just going to make a bunch of ovals and people are going to say, Hey, that guy just made a bunch of ovals. So you want to be extra careful that you're doing that, um, carefully. Now, what we have is we have another situation where they're not quite spaced the way I'd like them. And I think that's because I did not bring it out enough on this edge. And it kind of does this. A little shadow on the top. Then we bring it back. And there we go. Now that looks much more natural. I just kicked the camera. But you can see that they are relatively uniformly spaced, which is what I am seeing on the, the source material. So, um, again, I'm going to move into the pattern around it. And we're going to keep doing a few more of these rivets. Uh, what time have we got? Oh, it's only, it's only 8 o'clock. We'll keep going for, for quite a while. So, let's just get into it. Uh, I might, uh, I might not talk as much as I'm, as I'm continuing. Uh, if there's something that I don't explain that doesn't make sense, just, uh, let me know in chat and, uh, I'll answer your question to the best of my ability. So, uh, I'm going to move on to this pattern up here. This floral pattern continues. Make sure you can still see this. Yep. So this pattern actually goes dangerously close to the next button. And so I may end up having to change this depending on how close it actually is to the button but we'll deal with that when we get to the next button. So this is a nice, uh, pretty defined edge of this petal. Goes all the way from the top, almost to the bottom. A bit of a shadow here that I want to make sure I record properly. And this interacts with the fabric in a weird way right there and here, which is kind of strange, but again, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna have a problem with if like if something does look strange i'm not gonna like have a problem with it unless it is so strange that it competes with my understanding of what the thing is so that kind of ambiguity ambiguity is what's gonna make it look real because again if you're drawing what your brain understands it to be it's going to be too simplified. It's not going to be what you're actually seeing. And you're going to end up with something that is not, like doesn't have the likeness that you're looking for. So here, this is a relatively straightforward pattern here. This is a little thicker here. I want to really exaggerate that. And then there's some like noise here. Even when you're drawing just like random noise lines, you want to make sure they're still 
what you are seeing. So I missed a big important line here. And then this kind of interacts there. Okay. So pattern around that button down. Let's move on to the next button. Now, here I need to count again because we identified that there were four buttons uh, from where I started to this line. Then there's one on the line. And now I want to count how many I have left going back in space. And there's a lot of them, to be honest. Um, we're going to have to kind of subdivide this, maybe based on where this design is, because there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more going back in space. And they're going to get smaller and closer together because it's going back in space. So perspective is, is kind of, you know, shrinking them and the spaces between them. But if we say, okay, there's eight in this space, it's harder to understand where they are and where they're placed. Um, if we just continue the process, we may end up with eight if we're lucky, if we've been super precise, but we don't want to get to the end and then realize that we, you know, we're either super accurate or not. And our last button is actually ending up somewhere over here. We want to avoid, we want to save time. We want to save effort. So if we say there are four, by the time you get to this flower in this design up here, I don't even know if you can see them. You cannot. You can on the main camera. Let me adjust this. Okay, so this is the the design I'm, I'm referencing here. It's it's a very like round, almost like a sunflower, and like this here is the middle of it. It's like the I don't even know what you call them. It's stamen or I don't know. I don't know my flowers as well as some people. However, if we make that part of our organizational structure. We can say, okay, how many are on this side of this part of the design? And if we look, there's one directly beneath it. So we, have, if we keep that in mind, then there's one, two, three, four. So there's one button directly beneath that shape and then four in between that one underneath that shape and the one we've just painted. So, we could tackle this a few different ways. We could paint the one here um, and then work this way or paint this one and work this way, knowing that there's four there. Or we could, you know, do them one at a time this way and, and confirm our fifth one is directly underneath that shape. What I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to paint that one first because then we can kind of visually weigh whether or not we're spacing our other four properly, and more accurately, because we're comparing it to something else. So that's what I'm gonna do first. I'm gonna do this one. It's gonna be super out of place, um, but we know that there's four on this side and three on the left side. And the last two or three are really small. Um, and the last one is actually right on this organizational line here, which of course is off the edge. So let me show more of this so that you can see this entire area that we're working with. Let me see if I can get it. I don't think I can get it any closer, unfortunately, but I think you should still be able to see that pretty well. Okay. And actually what I'm noticing on camera so these do seem a little darker than what I would normally keep them at. So I am going to bring them back a little bit. Now that's just because it's kind of hard to tell from this angle because I have light reflecting off of them. It's something where you just want to like stand back here and look and make sure everything is the way it should be. What I like to do is you want to kind of not just 
look at how dark the lines are, but how dense the design is in that area. And this is really dense. Um, you know, this is really dense here on some areas, and that's going to make things seem darker and it's going to have more visual weight. And visual weight is what we want to prioritize throughout this whole thing, because if something has a lot of visual weight, it's going to act as a focal point. And if we just have some random pattern here that is, you know, drawing the eye so much because it has so much visual weight, we don't want that to be our focal point. We just want this to be part of this bigger whole, this bigger design. There will be a focal point later on. And I did say I want this kind of as a whole to be a focal point and be the main focus, but not this specific area. So if it, the design is really dense, make sure you, you lighten that a little bit. When we're painting color on top of this, remember this is just a drawing for underneath our uh, direct painting layers or all the primo, whatever you want to call it. Um, even when we're painting our colors, maybe we want to subdue them a little bit, maybe make them a little lighter, maybe make them a little more muted to make sure that that doesn't draw too much attention because detail will draw attention. Visual weight will draw attention. So be extra careful. And in some cases, I've worried about this design specifically in this area. I have been worried that that's happening, but I think it's okay in the grand scheme of things because this this pattern itself is not super like equally weighted there are some areas where there's not a lot going on actually this is actually kind of complex it just doesn't look complex in the drawing but there are some areas that are relatively uh empty and then there are some spots that are super super detailed and so that's something that i've been kind of juggling this whole time and it's something that I'm going to be very happy is done when I finish this section. Um, it's going to be much less stressful painting on top of this after all the work has gone into making sure it's laid out properly. So let's do, let's execute the plan. We're going to put one rivet, one rivet directly under this shape that we identified. There's going to be four buttons to the right of it, three to the left. And there's going to be a pattern surrounding all of them. Also, if you're enjoying yourself, please, please uh, follow and get your name on the wall, which this is paper directly on my wall. Um, you'll get more of this uh, if you like it. And any follow helps me out. This is my first painting stream. Uh, I have streamed games for a little bit to kind of get get used to streaming, but this is my first painting stream. Uh, don't feel forced whatsoever. I'm going to shut up and I'm going to paint. <laughs> so, we're going to start with this one here directly under this shape. Remember that we want our paint in this situation to be the consistency of milk. High body oil paint. Uh, to be honest, I don't know if there is a non high body equivalent of oil paint, but just keep in mind that this is more like the consistency of toothpaste. Uh, it's not like acrylic that you'll get in a tube that is kind of runny and you have to kind of put in like a, a bowl or something. This is essentially toothpaste, brown toothpaste. So, we want it to be milky. We're, to do that, we're going to use our painting medium. We are not using our, our paint thinner to thin the paint. This is for cleaning our brushes and erasing things. Put it on a paper towel, erase some things. And um, as long as the paint that you're painting on underneath has been cured, it'll take your topmost layer right off super easy that's what i could have done here when i was kind of wiping away at some of the edges um it's going to work better cleanly but because this is just going to be covered i'm not too worried about it so this rivet actually isn't directly underneath the this oval here it's kind of directly underneath the right edge 
So I'm going to kind of drop a line, completely vertical line. It's like right here in line with that. So I'm going to drop this line here. And this is where it's good to have something like, I have my Sharpie here that I'm drawing on the walls with. I can use that to really like nail down that edge and then paint it without like having to like wing it. That's what I'm going to do here. And then make sure that this is right on. Okay. So we know that our top corner of the, this rivet is there. Uh, I'm not going to worry about the bottom corner just yet because once we have the top corner, it's going to be really easy to, to find the rest. What I am going to do is I'm going to compare the top corner of this button to this corner of the, the chiller. Uh, let me make sure you can see that. Yep. So I'm going to find the angle here and it's going to intersect with the line we dropped and we're going to triangulate that top corner there. So it's, remember we're working with uh, angles. So we want to quadruple check, okay? Because humans are bad at estimating angles. So you want to make sure your tendency is to exaggerate the angle, right? So you always want to be mindful of that. Some people refuse to work with angles whatsoever, and they'll just work with uh, like distances instead of angles, like I, I prefer. So you could also do something like compare the width between the edge of the chair and where the button is and compare it to something else, like maybe the height of this flower or something. Um, that's what you would do if you were drawing from life where you don't have a grid. You know, you extend your arm, always make sure your arm is perfectly straight and you always want to be standing in the same spot and you can measure an angle and compare it to something else somewhere else. And as long as you're in the same spot and your arm is straight, you know that you're comparing apples to apples in terms of length. If you bend your arm, like if you do this, the closer it gets to your eye, the bigger it is. And so if you're comparing this line to that line, you know, it's, it's going to vary. So it's key that you keep your arm straight, stay planted in one area. Because I'm not working from life, I'm using angles, I'm using a grid, making sure it's super precise. Um, both are completely valid methods. Just remember to triple, quadruple check your angles because that can, one bad angle can throw off everything in the painting.